Hey everyone, welcome back or welcome if you're new. I hope you're all doing really well and I hope you've had some good reads. If not, I might be able to help you with that. I'm gonna do a little something different today. I haven't done a lot of videos lately since I wasn't feeling that well, but that didn't stop me from reading and buying books online because my Kindle Unlimited uh, trial subscription is almost up, so I gotta be prepared, which means I need some new real books to read. So, I found a couple, just a small book haul, cause well, unfortunately I can't afford the ginormous, yo, know, home library that I'd like to have one day. I'm still actually having to work for a living. But I did find a couple that will be, maybe not within the next couple weeks, cause I've, always, I've already read about nine or 10 books that I haven't told y'all about yet. So yeah. I have to actually read these and you know, get ready to review them for you, but I'll give you a little hint of what will be coming down the pipeline. The first one I've got is Carl Hyacinth's Double Whammy. Now, I have never read this, I've never read this series, but I read one other book by him, posted it on my Twitter account, and Christopher Moore responded with, yeah, you know, that he really likes Double Whammy and Skin Tight. And when the funniest author ever tells you, hey, this book is really good, you go and find those books. So if this is one of the best ones that Carl Hyacinth has to offer, according to the legend, then I'm going to give this one a try. And so basically, it's not from the same series, Nature Girl, that I read before, but it is still kind of a Florida is a mess, you know out in the boonies swamps kind of thing and murder and basically it's from what i understand it's there was a fishing competition that went wrong and people are dead and we've got crazy rednecks and mostly i'm reading this because you know christopher moore said it's good and if he thinks it's funny it probably is so i'm really excited to try this one and then I've got another one I told you all about before, at least the author is Tim Dorsey, and it's The Stingray Shuffle. This is another one that I picked up because, you know, Amazon and Goodreads always go, hey, you love Christopher Moore, check out these dudes. And I tried Tim Dorsey before, and the plot got a little convoluted in Pineapple Grenade, but overall, like, the characters were just off the walls, ridiculous, it was funny. So this is another one in that series with Sergei Storm. And once again, there is a crazy high body count because he's like a serial killer that somehow doesn't get busted or labeled as one. And so I don't know, apparently like he's supposed to be on his meds and not be you know, crazy and killing everybody, but he's gone off of them and he's in Florida causing trouble again. And yeah, yeah, apparently he's, and according to this one, he's even terrorizing frat boys and, you know, women's book clubs. So I'm not sure how that's going to go, but it sounds really funny. And I'm hoping that, yeah, it's as good, if not hopefully actually better than the last one by him. So we'll see. Hope y'all enjoy it. And uh, we've got, yeah. I still swear I'm three years old most days. And this is a book from Jen Canalita that I started the first one as it was part of a prime reading, but the rest of the series wasn't and I really enjoyed it. This one is Charmed. It's actually the second in that fairy tale reform school series. And basically the first one was, you know, this girl lives in Enchantasia by the Enchant Forest, which is it kind of bugs me that it's not enchanted like but overall you know i really like this story we've got this girl she gets busted for stealing because she's the you know shoemaker's daughter and you know since you know the fairy godmother took over the shoemaking business for the princesses they're struggling to get by so she you know steals on occasion and ended up getting sent to reform school which is run by former villains not all of which apparently are as reformed as they say when they're trying to tell the students become this way like we did 
And so there's a nice little, oh crap, at the end of the first book. And yeah, the bad guys kind of outed themselves, but they weren't all captured. So yeah, since bad stuff is happening at that school, our main character, Gilly, decides to stay with her buddies and try to fix the mess. And yeah, we know there's going to be some craziness ensuing because this is fun. It's got all the various fairy tale characters. Like, I don't know if you can see it from here, but yeah, that looks kind of Alice-y. We've got, yeah, the glass slipper, the frog prince. I'm not sure what that skull is doing, but it looks very Shakespearean creepy going on. The poison apple down here. There was some talk of Rapunzel in the last book and some secrets about her family that you're going to have to read the first one to figure out because it is actually very key. So I'm really hoping this one is as good as the last one that I thoroughly enjoyed. Now this one is going to sound kind of weird compared to everything else that I'm reading, but Nefertiti. It's I don't know about y'all, but I really enjoy the whole ancient Egyptian thing. And come on now, dude, ancient badass chick that, yeah, essentially ruled Egypt. Like, might not have been Pharaoh because she's a chick, but we all know who the real power was in that couple. So I'm hoping this is, you know, really gets into the intrigue and her background and we get a lot of ancient Egypt because I have never heard of this author before, it's Michelle Morin. So, I've never read a book like this. I've never read this author before. I've never even heard of her. I was just, you know, wandering around my favorite antique store in town and they have a couple of book selling booths that I always have to check out and this was in there so I had to snatch it up because they have an ancient Egyptian section and Come on now, this was within my price range. Some of the other books, not so much. So, but as, you know, obviously it's about Nefertiti and, you know, all the intrigue that's going on during her rule because she's this, you know, powerful but very nice person and assumes, like a lot of people do, well, I'm good, I follow the rules, I don't backstab anyone, so other people are good and not backstabby and lying and betraying and... No, that's not how the real world is. That's definitely not how the real world is when you've got power. So she's married to Amenhotep and yeah, they're hoping that, you know, big strong you know, woman can tame this idiot. And you know, she thinks it's all good. And her little sister goes, no, no, it's not. Watch your back. Some folks are after you and your husband. So we'll see what goes on with that. I hope it's really cool because I love the subject but I know nothing of how this book is actually going to be so I guess we will find that out together and the last book I have for you Chris Kuzneski's The Secret Crown this is another one in the Payne and Jones series that I've read once before and yeah told y'all about it. it's one of those it's kind of supposed to be James Rollins-esque but it wasn't as scientific and historical and there was no here's her yo here's the truth here's what I made up here's something in the middle in the back which I love that about James Rollins novels because the way he writes it you will believe all of it and <laughs> well okay I used to believe all of it until I got to study some of the subjects and went, hey that's just cool movie magic it's not really how debt cord works but yeah most of the stuff is pretty, you know, believable. So you read in the back and go, oh, that's why it's believable. It's real. That he made up. That he took some literary license with. These guys don't do that, but it is still really fun. Like the last adventure, you know, they were traveling around South America and getting into all kinds of trouble. And all started off, they were just in some tunnels messing with some, you know, ROTC guys and testing out, you know, not lethal, but some fun deterrent toys on some newbies and ended up in a mess chasing down historical treasures and getting almost murdered and getting into all kinds of trouble with exes. And so I'm hoping this one is as intriguing. This is actually about 
uh, King Ludwig II from Bavaria, and he supposedly had this, you know, hidden cache of a crap ton of gold to, you know, finance all his castles, including, like, one that was gonna be, like, the biggest, coolest thing ever, which, if it was real, I would totally have to explore that one day. I definitely need to get my passport so I can check out all, like, the Gothic and evil castles and find all the hidden rooms and stuff. Who doesn't love that? Come on! That's, like, half the appeal of Harry Potter is, oh my god, I really want to go to these castles. That Hogwarts needs to be real, because, one, magic, but two, oh my god, ghosts and secret rooms and hidden passages, or, well, not hidden, except for the stairs moved, so now you don't know where you're gonna end up. I love it. I totally want to explore a bunch of them. So there, you know, we've got, again, our Payne and Jones. You know, there has now been not just rumor, but supposedly some actual, you know, intel found that, yeah, he actually did have this money, and I want y'all to go find it. And, of course, that ain't gonna go well. I don't know what's gonna happen yet, but you know folks are gonna get shot out. They're gonna almost die. Somebody probably is. They're gonna be traveling the world, getting into all kinds of action, and there's some nice historical intrigue with their dangerous, deadly treasure hunt. So I'm really excited. I liked the first one, hence going and getting another book from their series. So I'm hoping this one is good, and when I finish it, I will tell y'all all about it so you can decide whether you want to pick it up or, yeah, I thought it'd be good. Thanks for biting the bullet for me. Yeah, but hey, that's what I'm here for. We'll find out whether it's good or not together. And of course, I'm still going to be doing the Summerween stuff. Like, I've got, I finished the taking, and I will be telling y'all about that one now that I'm feeling better. And right now I'm reading a Matthew Riley novel because I can't always read the same style. I have to bounce it around a little bit or I get confused of, wait, did, didn't they just do the, oh yeah, that was the other book. And I start blending them, especially because I always have something going on my phone and an actual book. So I try to make sure they're very different so I don't get confused. And then the books end up very differently when you start mixing in plots. So right now I'm reading an action book because I was reading a book about monsters and magic and all kinds of craziness going on on Kindle. So, But I finished that series, so once I finish... My actual physical book, I will be getting into some spooky Stephen King to keep on this summerween feeling. And then it'll just be straight up Halloween one feeling once it gets cool. But I hope you all enjoy and I will see you soon. Bye. Happy reading.